this is Ginger from My Sister Scrapper. Today I am super excited to share my project with you. I am collaborating or actually doing a project with Jenny from Polly's Paper Studio. Every year she does a 12 Days of Christmas in July series. And um, so she asked me if I wanted to participate and so I said absolutely. I mean she's amazingly talented. If you guys do not subscribe to her channel, you need to do that right now. I'll put a link in the description box to her super cute project. We decided we were gonna do loaded envelopes. And so um, I'll put a link to her project as well. And also just make sure you check out all of her other projects on her 12 Days of Christmas because they are absolutely fabulous. Seriously, I mean, I wish I could make those flower arrangements like she does. She's unbelievably talented. And she's adorable too. So here's what I, my little loaded envelope. I'm calling it a loaded envelope, even though it's more like a pocket, but I wanted my envelope to resemble one of those six by nine manila things, you know, with the little clasp. So this is what I created. And I have some really cute little papers that I got from Snow and, Co the Snow and Cocoa. And I think it's from American Crafts. Um, no, crepe paper. Crepe paper, um, snow and cocoa, which I think everybody has some because you know everybody went to Tuesday morning and bought them all. But anyway, I decided to dig in my stash and use some of that. So on the front cover here, on this first little pocket, I have a pretty little poinsettia. This is from Prima, same as these two flowers as well, because I'm not real good at making my own. But I can. I just I'm just really really slow. So I just went ahead and added some flowers right here, and I have some little jute string right here, and then check out this cute little chipboard bird. I mean, oh my God, is he adorable or what? And then my little sentiment, I just layered up some of the chipboard elements right here. And then in the first, and I added a little border of glitter cardstock on the top of each of my pockets. So I have a pocket here, a pocket here, and then I have the large pocket at the top. So in the first pocket, what I did is I created a couple of tags. And I wanted to bring out the black, so my tag bases are black. And then I added some just white cardstock on the back and I did have the washi tape from this collection as well so I just wrapped the white cardstock with the washi tape before I glued it down created some super cute little hole reinforcers here and added um, some more of the coordinating washi tape here and here and this super cute little car with the little tree on top says Merry Christmas and then this was a little wooden uh, snowflake I had in my stash and I added a little bling here and some pretty little pink ribbon right here and then I also had a pack of tags that came with the collection and this one says warm wishes and I just left it plain. I just added some um, jute string. This is actually from Lawn Bon um, to the top. And then in the second pocket, there was this really cute little uh, chipboard element that had this cute little glitter frame and the snowman. So I thought, well, I'll just make a little booklet and it's pretty much pretty close to the size of a gift card. So you could use this as a little gift card holder for the holidays. And then I did add some papers on the back. And then here's the second one, cute little cut apart from the six by six paper pad, some more of the design paper here and here, and then I put the little pink inside. And then I made a little clipboard, uh, paper clip embellishment. I fussy cut this little jar from one of the images and added the little chipboard star. And then these are just the papers here and another fussy cut little snowman. And then I did add some more design paper on the back because this was single sided paper and I didn't want it to be white on the back. And then for the large pocket, what I thought I would do is I created a card. And I kind of got it. I wanted my card to be flat because I knew I didn't have any gussets on the side. But you know me. Hello, look what I did. I added this really cute uh, chipboard element. This says let it snow. And this cute little, this was actually part of the tags. I just covered up the hole with a little black um, matte pearl. Have a little tiny paper clip here, a little chubby one to keep the envelope closed. Since um, all I had from the crepe paper, snow and cocoa was the six by six paper pad, I used this um, coordinating mint colored gingham check from Lawn Fawn in the 12 by 12 to make my envelope, which I used the envelope punch board. And then here is my little card. And these little elements here, um, this paper here is from Prima and it's the Sweet Peppermint. I know that's about, what, three, four years old? Yes, I still have some Sweet Peppermint collection, but I thought it matched the collection here as well. And then these little uh, ephemera pieces are from Prima's um, Santa Baby collection, but I thought the cocoa and the little, you know, match the collection. So it says the perfect Christmas. I punched out some little uh, snowflakes with a punch, and then I did finish off the inside with another strip of that cute little washi tape. 
So that's the little card that goes inside this envelope. And um, yeah, because I got this big old chipboard thing on there. I had to keep my card flat. So that was kind of hard for me, but what can I say? I thought it turned out really cute. So there's that. And then here, now I'm gonna really quick show you the products that I use and then I'll show you how I made the base of my envelope. It's pretty simple. And then you can fill it with whatever sweet little elements you want. So you're gonna need, um, well, let's see, let me tell you what I used here first. Again, I got the snow and cocoa and I got it Tuesday morning. I don't know how long ago. But it came with all this fabulous washi tape. And what I liked about it, it was all different widths. So I used the Snow and Cocoa washi tape. I used the 6x6 six six paper pad. And um, that's what I used for that. And then I also had the little tags, which you got 12 tags in here. And I used those. These are the little wooden snowflakes I had in my stash. And I think I got these from Butterbee Scraps years ago. And then for my hole reinforcers, um, I have this really cool set of hole reinforcer dies <laughs> that I got from Elizabeth Craft Designs. And I love it because not number one, it cuts eight hole reinforcers out at one time. So I just took a scrap of this shimmer light blue cardstock, stuck a piece of one inch score tape on the back and then die cut my little hole reinforcers and then they're already adhesive sticky they made them like a sticker but these are so cute i mean you can all i love this one they're all adorable all different designs and sizes this one looks like little gears or starbursts um it came you're supposed to put them on this thing but i don't know how that worked so i just used one of my old graphic 45 rings from their tags some more gears these cute little arrow ones and I love the little flower one, some more gears, and then just the plain round ones. So that's how I made my little hole reinforcers, you know, super easy, but that's a great little die. And then I also had the 12 by 12 chipboard sheet. As you can see, I used quite a bit of those, but there's still some really cute ones left. So that's what I used. And now we're going to make the base for our loaded envelope. So again, since all I had was the six by six paper pad from Snow and Coco, I went ahead and used some 12 by 12 papers from um, Sweet Peppermint because I thought the red and white striped kind of matched. This was the back side, but I didn't really care. So what you're going to need is to make the base of the envelope is a piece that measures 11 inches by eight inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it here in the scoreboard and we're going to score it. With the 11 inches across the top, we're gonna to score it at five and a quarter. And this is pretty thick because it's Prima paper, so it's pretty thick cardstock. So, and then I'm gonna over here and do it at 10 and a half. So my pocket's gonna be five and a quarter by seven and a quarter when I get it all done. So then I'm gonna rotate it a quarter turn, and now I have my eight inches across the top, and I want to score it at seven and one quarter. I wanted this flap to be a little bit longer than a half an inch, just so it looks like an actual, you know, one of those envelopes that got the big flap up the top, so, from the bottom. So I'm gonna score that at seven and a quarter. Okay, then with our scoreboard. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to fold on our score line. So, so now what we're going to do is we've got our half inch and our bottom and then our middle one. What I want to do is I want to cut this bottom section off that's got this half inch tab over here like this. So I'm going to just use my scissors. Normally I would use my paper trimmer because I do not cut straight, but we'll give it a whirl for the tutorial. So I'm going to cut right up to that five and a quarter inch score line. like that so it looks like this I got my half inch tab and then my big tab down here on the bottom now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our adhesive we're gonna add adhesive to this tab and then fold it 
and adhere it together, and then we're gonna add adhesive to this tab. Okay, now I like to add my adhesive before I cut my corners at an angle. Um, just because I like to. <laughs> because I wanna make sure that I get coverage. Now you can use wet adhesive, but I make a mess with wet adhesive, and scar tape works really well for me. But you use what you like to use. Okay, I'm gonna burnish my tape. Then I'm gonna take my scissors and cut my corners at an angle like so. So that way I have tape on all those little points. Okay, so now we're gonna take the backing off of our tape. And we're going to fold it over and stick it down. Okay, there we go. So now our little flap's gonna to go to the back and we're gonna glue that down. Again, I'm gonna use my score tape. But again, you can use wet glue. And I'm going to cut my little corners at an angle. Success. I think it looks good. Now you can ink around your edges if you want. I didn't because the snow and cocoa paper isn't really vintage looking. And this has already got some pre-distressing on it. Anyway, but that's our little pocket. Okay, so that's our base pocket. So we've got this big space here. This is gonna be the back where our flap is. So now to make the little pockets um, on the front, like I did here, I just did two because I considered this my third pocket. So I have one, two, three. So grab our scoreboard and you're, you can get, if you wanna use the same pattern on the original design, I didn't use the same pattern, but for the video I will, um, cause you can get, if you're using the six by six, you can get both pocket pieces out of the same paper. Okay, so it's six inches wide. This is five and a quarter. Now I normally would make this six and a quarter, an inch larger, so I have a half an inch on both sides, but my paper was only six, so you know what? You make it work, people. So the first piece is going to measure six inches by three and a half. Put it in the scoreboard with the six inches across the top. Now, since I don't have a half an inch on both sides, I'm gonna have to just count my little tick marks and I'm gonna go one, two, three eighths of an inch and score. Flip it all the way around. One, two, three eighths of an inch and score. So basically that's five and five eighths or you can do three eighths of an inch over here, it's the same thing. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna use my half inch and I'm gonna score that at three. Okay. Second piece that you're gonna need for this smaller pocket is going to be again, six inches by two and a half. And we're gonna do the same scoring. We're gonna do three eighths of an inch in from here. So that'd be five and five eighths. Flip it around five and five eighths, flip it this way, and we've got two and a half, we're gonna score at two, okay? That's how I made my pockets. Super easy, I mean, seriously. I mean, you can actually use an envelope too, but you know, I didn't like that yellow manila coat, and I probably had some white ones somewhere, but you know what, I wanted it striped. But you can do that too. So again, we're gonna fold on our score lines. So, we're going to add our tape on the bottom, and I need some skinnier tape for this, which I'm not sure where it is at the time, so we'll just use the wet glue. All right, which I'm going to put in, and I'm going to trim my corners here, like so. And like so, right where they intersect, is where I'm gonna put my scissor line. And we can trim these a little bit too, like so. Now I'm gonna grab my pocket, make sure I'm gonna, I have the back, which is where my seam is, right here on the bottom, that's the back. I'm gonna pull this off. And I'm gonna line this up at the bottom like so. And stick it down. That's a little crooked. Let's see if we can get that off of there. There we go. 
Let's do it this way. Why didn't I do this first? I just like to butt it up against it like this and fold it over. <laughs> Makes more sense, right? Lord help me. Okay, so now I'm gonna fold in my little tabs and I'm just gonna use my wet glue. Normally I would use quarter inch score tape, but I have no idea what I did with it. I thought I had it out here, but this will work. I'm gonna fold that up, stick it down. And there's our pocket. Now on my sample, I went ahead and just cut a little um, half inch or three eighths of an inch strip of glitter paper and glued it on top just to separate the patterns. But since this is the same pattern, I'm not gonna do that. All right, I'm gonna do my second pocket now. So we're gonna add our tape to the bottom. Like so. I'm going to trim my corners like so. My top ones. I'm going to my score lines. Now this one's going to sit right on top of this one, okay? I'm gonna take the backing off. I'm gonna line it up like this. Stick it down. Add my glue or my score tapes, which I really be rather be using, but we will. It work, people. And hold it up. Take it down. Okay, so there we go. We have our cute little pocket here, and our little pocket here, and then our big pocket here. Right? So then you can just take all your pretty little. I like to embellish this part first. Um, before I stick my stuff in there. So embellish it however you want, and then just go ahead and make your little items to put inside. Again, I made my little tags and I just cut these and angled the corners and then did the design paper. So I got a couple of little tags here, and then here, and then this little pre-made tag that was part of the collection. I thought he was pretty cute. We'll stick him in there. And then these two little booklets, which I thought were super cute. Again, you could stick a little gift card in there. That will fit right on there. Just put a little glue dot. That'd be cute. Those are going to go in the little pocket. And then this little paper clip embellishment, which I thought was adorable. We're going to stick that in one of the pockets too. How about right here? Like so. Just like that. And then our card, which will go in there. But I should have put the card in first because it's so thick here, it doesn't want to slide in. But anyway, there you get the gist of it. So that's my little loaded envelope for Polly's Paper Studios. Christmas in July, 12 days of Christmas. So there you have it, everybody. Make sure you check out Jenny's uh, video today, and I'll put the link in the description box. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.